Hi, welcome to the Arts and Crafts Show. I'm Alex Zaves, and I'm in Minnesota. Yes, Minnesota. I'll give you a... How do you say that? Minnesota. Anyway, I'm here to do nine shows. I'm on the wait list for a tenth show. And how did I get here? Well, it's kind of a long history, and uh, it's been a lot of trials and tribulations to get here, but uh, it was worth it. I uh, want to say that uh, Minnesota shows are excellent to do, good neighborhood, lots of people who have money here that want to spend at the arts and crafts shows. And it's a short season from May 15th till September 15th for outdoor shows. Before then, before May 15th and after, there's some uh, indoor shows which are also very well good to do. So to give you a real snapshot of how I started this, um, a real quick history lesson is that in the 1970s, I begin my full-time career, 40 years now, of a full-time artist and craftsman in Hawaii. I started off as a candle maker, and I did that for the 70s, and then things started to go slow. There were seven candle makers on the island, and they all went out of business except for two of us. Um, and the other one, he was a very accomplished sculptor in candle making, and he, you know, was going to stick it out till forever. On my particular case, I decided to move to California, leaving him alone to have the full candle business uh, market. But I moved to California. I started in Southern California, and I traveled all the way up to Seattle. And then I traveled all the way down to just above San Francisco. I stayed in Bodega Bay in Santa Rosa County. Stayed there for a year. Business wasn't all that great. So I ended up moving further back south down to Southern California, Santa Barbara, California. They had a show that was every Sunday, as long as you lived within Santa Barbara County, every Sunday plus holidays. So there was like 60 shows a year for the full price of $250 back then. It was a pretty good deal. You were probably making about $300 to $1,000 on a Sunday show. It was just a one-day show. You live nearby. You come, you set up in the morning. And people came up from Los Angeles, you know, to visit the show. It was a limited show. It was 300 artists in the show. There was a wait list. But I got in just under the wait list, and there was still a wait list going on. Candle making again went downhill again for me. I had to make a decision. What am I going to do? I ended up becoming a metal sculpture in copper. I didn't have time to go to school. I went out and got a couple of books. I read it up on it. I locked myself away in my studio. And within a month's time, I learned how to do copper work welding. And now I was doing well because I was making copper water fountains and I was selling them at the beach show on Sundays and I was in the higher bracket, right around $1,000 on a Sunday. But you only have five, maybe six days of work to get to the next Sunday. So, okay, things were going good in the 1980s because that's when I arrived in California. And then all of a sudden, 1990s happened. There was the housing bust. Copper wasn't selling, and art in generally wasn't selling, because art is usually last on the list to sell. I mean, it's more of a luxury item. And the crafts and the art section went really way downhill. A lot of artists and crafts people just left, okay? They ended up working for Home Depot or florist shops or some kind of, you know, they work for somebody else, okay? I couldn't do that. I was deciding that I had to pick up and move. And what made me do that was because I had six Sundays in a show, in a row, at the show, that I did not sell anything. And I realized, what am I going to do? I was told many, many stories that, you know, shows back east are better. You know, you know Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, and, you know, Washington up in that area, shows are also going slow. Tempe, Arizona, the shows are going higher in price, but people did those shows. They weren't making any money. So what were they going to do? I mean, a lot of people hung out at the, at the beach show on Sunday and they just toughed it out. They tightened their belts, but I wasn't willing to do that. So what I did was I picked up 
everything I had and I went to Florida because the shows were better back east, but I couldn't go all the way back east because it just seemed too far to me at the time. Though I didn't talk with somebody who used to do the show in California. They moved to Vermont and they said, you know, it's great back here, you know, better than we did in California. So I went to Florida. I did shows in Florida and things were pretty good there. So what I did was I put everything in storage and I came back to California, got a lot more of my, my, my work together. And I went back to Florida again the second year. And instead of uh, just doing a few shows, I had booked for like 11 shows. And, but I, I'm not going to stay in hotel rooms and I need a place to work because those 11 shows are spread out over the time from December to May. So I rented a house in Stewart, Florida, actually Jensen Beach was just off to the side. And I was renting for $200 a month. Very good price. So I kept the house for two years. And after two years, because I was meeting people from other states that were saying, come up here, it's, business is better, Florida is slow, which I thought Florida was a lot better than California at the time. But I ended up deciding that I would go up to Minnesota. So I would pack up a lot of my work, kept my house and go up to Minnesota, my house in Florida, and go up to Minnesota. And I did a couple of shows up there. And it's true. The shows that I was selling up to in Minnesota was twice as much as I was selling in Florida. Again, I would make the rounds back to California, come back to Florida, do the shows between December and May. I would start all the way down there by Key West in January. And I worked my way up north. I did um, some shows over by Tampa and I and, uh, and up to Fernandino Beach in uh, Jacksonville. And then I hit Georgia and I shut down my house because I was going to move to Minnesota. I moved up to Minnesota. I did four or five shows up there. And then I would just do really well. Whatever I had left over, I put everything into a locker room, into a locker and went back to California again. Got all the rest of my tools and would go back directly to Minnesota. The point I'm trying to make here is, is that if you're going to stay in a neighborhood, which is what I'm doing right now, is that I would go to a local real estate agent, which I've done now for many years, but I'm here in Minnesota. I'm in this house right here. And because I went to a, a, a local real estate agent, I was able to get a house and a workshop to live in far cheaper than living in a, in a hotel. Now, I know there's a lot of RVers out there and they have their workshop that they tow behind them. They're in a whole different category. But, and uh, we can talk about that later. But I wanted a place to stay for four months and I could just have some place as a central location, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm paying $1,000 a month for a house, which is, includes all utilities. I have a workshop and I have a place to bounce off to do the shows I'm doing here in Minnesota. The, I can do enough money here in Minnesota for the nine, maybe 10 shows that for the rest of the eight months out of the year, I do not need to work providing I live outside the USA because living outside the USA is far cheaper than living inside the USA. Okay, this thousand dollar a month just for a house and a rent. I mean, people live uh, you know, for a whole month on that. I mean, you can live in Thailand for like seven or eight hundred dollars a month. You can live in Africa for five hundred, six dollars a month, and you know, other Asian countries is a lot less expensive. You know, true that the traveling is a little to get there can be expensive. Can be you know, you know, six, seven, eight, you know, twelve hundred dollars round trip. But I'm saying saying to you that a lot of my life was always my artwork came from bad times and moving into good times. And when I was in Florida, I had a great time. I mean, I, I do have one article right here because I had so much free time. It says here, first American crosses Florida Straits on a jet ski. Okay. And that's what I did. And that was when I was 40 years old. And you, it's only because when a market goes bad in one area, I was willing to change and become a different kind of an artist in a different material, a different subject, a different, uh, you know, from candles to, to metal. Metal is very, very good to me. So 
sometimes you need to change your uh, what you're doing. Anyway, I'm up here in Minnesota and I'm setting up my workshop and I've got a video out on that and I hope you take a look at that one there. I'm going to be giving some secrets of metal work because I'm only doing this for the next three years. I hope it's maybe two, but it looks like maybe three years and then I'm out. As for arts and craft shows, I, I will share all the secrets I have about that. That's not a, that can help you actually get into the show that you want. But please subscribe and ring that bell and I will share these secrets to you freely. And um, we can talk story more about it at the uh, talk story. That's, what, that's how they talk in Hawaii. We talk story. Um, we, can, we can talk about it through the comment section below. And we can uh, have a good time and I would be willing to share all these secrets because it's a new world now for artists and craftspeople. I'm an old timer. I'm 64 years old. I'm looking at Social Security uh, next year, the year after, and I'm going to look at, you know, doing some kind of an arts and crafts business in Madagascar, which is where my new home is now. I have a house there. I've got a family there. And I'm not going to be an artist there because artists there, it's, you know, look at this here. This is a piece of artwork from Madagascar, okay? A lot of, a lot of work in this piece of woodwork. They make it and sell it for like $3 or $4, okay? Well, I can't live off of that, but I'm thinking of becoming an organizer of art shows, which is what I did 40 years ago in Hawaii when I was first starting out. Because when I first started out, I was doing uh, flea show markets around the Aloha Stadium. And there weren't any really arts and craft shows back then 40 years ago. They were beginning to be, you know, they were beginning nationwide to sort of begin. All right. They were just starting to show up uh, uh, everywhere. But and I was part of that movement at that time. And I was doing that in Hawaii. There was only one arts and craft show. I expanded the market to four a year plus a gallery show. And that's what I may end up doing over in Madagascar is organizing some art shows for artists because they really don't have the opportunity like America did 40 years ago. So please subscribe if you're interested or excited about, you know, doing shows up in Minnesota, learning coppersmithing and just kind of getting a general idea of how arts and crafts work and the thinking behind the mind of an organizer who they do not do artwork. They're an organizer. It's two different things. It's sort of like a, a two dimensional artist trying to be a three dimensional artist or vice versa. It's very difficult and almost never are able to do both. It's like you're operating on two different levels. Anyway, here we are again. This is some, I'll show you another piece right here from Madagascar. I'm going to be doing a video on this. I'm selling these, but I didn't do this work, but it's a pretty amazing work. Anyway, catch up at the next Arts and Crafts show. Alex Zaves here. See you next time. They're doing rice there. That's how they're pounding out the rice.